Guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tom, and in today's episode, we are going to be collimating the Hyperstar V4 for the C11. We've got a couple of images that we're gonna share at the end of the video. And also, guys, don't forget, if you like the content, if you like the channel, please uh, consider subscribing, liking it, and, uh, and throw me a comment. I'm happy to come back to you guys, or happy to take any advice. in the UK we've probably got about four hours of clear night before the clouds start rolling in so uh, let's get the observatory roof off and we'll crack on from there. So I won't be running the AM5 tonight. I'm just going to run the uh, the Hyperstar, just because it's new, it's new piece of equipment that I'm super excited about. I got to image it last night and got to collimate it, so we've got another night of imaging, which is looking like it's going to be a good night. So let's get into our collimation. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start collimating the Hyperstar and just making sure that it's lined up with the primary mirror so we get nice pinpoint stars. So how we achieve that is by adjusting some little screws that we've got in the Hyperstar. Now on this image just here, you'll see that this is a collimation that is out of focus. So you'll get that donut shape as you can see. Now where the wires are going across, that's actually where we're going to adjust it so we're going to create an angle on the hyperstar and that's going to create the collimation to center our donut if you like don't mean like donut you know this donut so i'm going to show you now how you can collimate your hyperstar so what you've got is nine screws and they all do different things on the hyperstar so let's go over the first one, which is your orientation of your camera and how you can adjust that first without actually affecting the Hyperstar once it's been collimated. Okay, so the first three screws that we're gonna look at are the ones with the big washers. These ones just here. Now, if I was to unscrew those, what I can actually do, and I'll just show you quickly. So once I've undone those screws, what I can now do is I can rotate the whole Hyperstar. Now by unscrewing those, it won't actually affect the collimation. So as you can see, with the screws, with the bigger washer, what we can do is we can actually orientate our camera exactly how we'd like, so that when we frame it up, it's nice and easy. So let's go on to the next set of screws. So you have a lock-in screw, and then you have an adjustable screw. So what you would do is you would unlock all of the unlocking screws first which I'll just show you how to do that. So we're not gonna show you how to actually adjust the Hyperstar for collimation. Okay, so the next set of screws, guys, that we're going to adjust are going to be these ones, which are just our lock-in nuts. And what we'll do is we'll just loosen all of those off. I won't do it with my one because I've collimated the Hyperstar now, and I don't really wanna go through uh, the whole rigmarole of collimating it again, especially with the weather right now. As I'm sure you're all aware, it has been bloody cloudy. Is If you look at that picture, you can actually see the wires that I have going across the actual corrector plate when it's coming through on the image. Now we know that the center is actually around here at the moment. So it's further away than where we need it to be. Where you see the donut is off center from that section, what I did with mine was I tightened this up so that it brought it up at an angle away from where the wires were. And just small adjustments allowed me to center that donut. Once I'd centered the donut, so here's the second image. This is after about three adjustments. I managed to get it quite close. So 
I then went and done my final adjustments with the longer screws. Once I knew that my collimation was pretty bang on, what I then needed to do was lock it all down with these screws. So I used the three screws, tightened all of those down, and then I started to frame everything up. So after that, once I'd achieved a perfectly round donut, which was what I thought was a perfectly round donut. So once I got a donut smaller and smaller and smaller, for the first image that you see here, that's when uh, we was quite far off. After a few adjustments, I then went over to this one and it just needed a couple more adjustments. So after that, I then got to this stage, uh, which I thought was good. And I then put the do cover back onto my telescope. I put the button off mask on and then we actually focused in on the star perfectly. And here's the result of that one. So guys, just remember with the Hyperstar, when you take your image, you're gonna to need to flip it as well. I didn't actually realize that to start with, but um, somebody made a comment on one of my pictures that I'd posted on one of the sites I go on to. And it said, you know, oh, it's, it's different because it's the wrong way around. Um, I didn't realize that that's what the Hyperstar does. So uh, yeah, remember, if you've got the Hyperstar, you'll need to flip your images as well. All right, let's get into this. So guys, here's a few clips from two nights worth of imaging. One of them was three hours and the other one was four hours. So not a great deal of time, but yeah, here's a few clips. 